deep dive. Up. Deep dive with Dirac Live. I love it. It's got a nice ring Ooh. to it. You waited to make that rhyme. <laughs> Somebody works in marketing. Not prepared. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome. Go ahead, Matt. Tee us up, brother. I'll tee us up. Welcome, everybody, to the Listening Lounge. Um, it is happy hour, and we'll get into that in a minute. Um, but today we have a very special episode for those of you that follow us or those of you that just started. Um, we are doing Dirac Live, a deep dive into the technology that is incredibly changing the face of not only uh, home theater, but cinema and many, many other platforms as well. So um, we're happy to have um, some special guests. Mark, uh, do you want to do some introductions? Well, yes, absolutely. Uh, our very own Rob Vera, who is the master, uh, we call him the professor in the company um, with his technical expertise, uh, specializing here in Ankyo. And he's bringing a special guest. Uh, Rob, why don't you introduce our friend from Dirac? Oh, sure. Yeah, uh, Nilo and I go way back. Um, uh, actually, I'm going to allow him to introduce himself because there's a rich history of how uh, that organization got started. But my favorite part about it is um, that it was really born from audiophiles, right? So it's not, um, yeah, so it's not, hey, let's build an algorithm and license it. It's more like, hey, there's a need and uh, we personally all love audio and that's why we work in this industry. So uh, Nilo, if you could give a, tell us a little bit about yourself and your role and what makes it so fun uh, to work at DRAC and be a part of that um, rich history. Yeah, thanks, Rob. Um, yes, uh, it's it's true. Um, so it goes back uh, more than 20 years uh, at the university in Uppsala, Sweden. It's uh, uh, extremely old university. It's, it's, it's older than the United States. Um, so we were a couple of uh, PhD students and uh, professors uh, interested in, in music and sound and speakers and all that. And uh, we were actually doing research, not in acoustics, but in uh, wireless communications. And we thought that wouldn't it be possible to apply like similar or even the same algorithms that we do in order to, you know, recover information from the wireless transmission that is, you know, distorted by the transmission over, you know, all the noise and, and the reflections and whatnot that affects the signal. Couldn't we apply that kind of same algorithm to uh, audio systems so that the rooms where the sound is bouncing off the walls and, and the ceiling and all that, uh, so, so that you can recover like the, what we call the artist's intention uh, from the distorted signal somehow. So that's how it began. Um, and well, we started doing measurements. Um, we uh, worked with what we call impulse response uh, analysis and then uh, correction of the same impulse response. And we figured out, yeah, so we should like pre distort the signal before it leaves the amplifier basically so that it, you know, it corrects itself before it's even transmitted. And once you it, it reaches your ears, it's right. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. What a what a great thing to start with the purity in mind. Um, I love that that purity of thought. Um, so welcome, Hilo. It's very, yes, very thank nice you. to see you and very thank nice to for, have you on board. Yes, thank you thank for, you for this me. is going to be a, a, a power hour. How, how long do we have, Matt? We have until five. Do we really? Yeah, do we've we got really? an hour. <laughs> well, everybody knows. Does everybody know Vlad? He's now Maybe. part of the the, the, the listening lounge team. He's director of product development, and you, you see premium audio company here. So this is this is our our, our uh, overarching um, company that encompasses all the brands. You know, we have uh, specific duties, uh, of course. You know, before with Klipsch, of course, we're focused on Klipsch. You know, some of us, but others uh, have 
focus on other brands and then Matt, you, you know, you might be have your hands and everything, you know, but, <laughs> but uh, we just wanted to introduce that because really we are focusing on Ankyo today, but I do love the fact that we have the optimized mode uh, in the Ankyo AVRs uh, that work with Klipsch specifically. And then Dirac, how cool it is to fine tune the total setup. And that's what we're going to be talking today. Fine tuning. Speaking of fine tuning, uh, does everybody have a beverage in hand? Or close by, yeah. Okay. So, um, this is a spontaneous. Everybody, we since we started the listening lounge series, this is a happy hour. It's meant to be light and fun and informative. Um, <laughs> but uh, in the spirit of Paul Klipsch, who I think occasionally sipped on a little whiskey, um, and he lived to the age of ninety-eight. So, if there's some correlation there, maybe there's. Um, but. Moderation all in all things, maybe. But uh, go ahead and raise a glass if you want to share with us what. Uh, no, no, Rob, not moderation. Ooh, wow. No. <laughs> what do you got, Vlad? Ooh, gumball head, tried and true from uh, Three Floyds Brewing. I think I've had it on the show a couple of times, so I'm sorry I don't have anything new to share. But uh, I looked in the fridge and it was there, and it's a phenomenal beer. So I'm making no excuses. So and I'm a good thing. excited about this conversation because. Nilo and I know each other indirectly because uh, he was he took part in testing one of our products early on um, as a product partner when we didn't use Dirac live. This was when it was just Klipsch and we used Dirac at that time, what was called Dirac HD sound to optimize our T5 A and C earphones to right. sound phenomenal. So uh, right. this is exciting. I've got I've got some Dirac live questions. Well, that, uh, we're going to be raising a glass. We're going to have, have to toast to that soon. Neil, do you have anything with over there? Yes, actually. What else than um, Japanese whiskey? Oh, 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 oh fantastic! Well, for the occasion. And, and and just as disclaimer, it is 10 p.m. where you are. Is it? Is it? I was just going to mention. It's not four o'clock like it is over here. We still have dinner ahead of us. Got to keep it light. Yeah, we, we Rob, did invite. Uh, we did invite one of our engineers, but he said. I think 5 a.m. here in Japan is a little bit too early for happy hour for me. <laughs> well, I'll catch you guys on the next one. <laughs> okay, I know. Rob? Okay, Rob. Yep. Oh, me? Oh, okay. Yeah. So I hidden in my Marshall stack mug here, ah, which there you go. Very nice. Well, it doesn't say Marshall on it, but uh, is a German Oktoberfest beer. Celebrate the season. It's Hofbrau brand. So nice. uh, cheers. Cheers, guys. Beautiful. And I'm probably after the Yankees lost last night and watching tonight's game, I'll just keep going with this. <laughs> keep it going. Well, I'm, I'm from the East Coast, unlike uh, the the other guys in the premium audio company are mostly Midwest based, right? Got some <laughs> I'm West a Floridian in there. I'm a Floridian. OK, Matt, um, I have uh, red wine and a metal cup. Class. Tried and true. Class. So it is October and it is Oktoberfest, but I was looking through my beer glasses and I broke this out early. The uh, Christmas story glass with the lamp and then nice. it's a major award. Classic. So Classic. and then instead of Oktoberfest, I, it's it's a Belgian fest left blonde. All right. So I'm going to pour this and we're going to have a little quick toast and Very we're nice. off to the races. Mm -hmm. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. 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 So I'm going to start this off real quick with uh, something that, you know, I, I'm, you know, I'm hardcore about clips and control directivity and minimizing issues in the room because we're focusing the sound into the listening area. I've got a multi-channel system in here. And uh, when it's set up and everything's balanced, it's fantastic. And I know that the one room enhancement uh, algorithm that can take it to the next level is Dirac. I remember that only professionals really had ass, uh, access to this in the past, but now it's so accessible in these new receivers. It's super cool. And I just want everyone to know that um, it, ha it has to be at the top for us to embrace it. And that's exactly what we have here um, with Dirac. And so thank you so much for your time. And I'm not going to talk. I want all this information to be shared because I, I know there are a lot of people who want to know what the magic is behind your act. Right. Thanks, Mark. Uh, sure. Those are very warming words. 
yeah, so what is the secret of this? Um, we usually talk about the impulse response. I mentioned it in the introduction as well. So I think the secret ingredient here is that we actually optimize the impulse response. And that means that we're not just applying an EQ, an equalizer that you know evens out the frequency response, uh, but we're also dealing with the time properties of the signal. So it could be, for example, misaligned drivers that are fixed by this. Um, it could be early reflections from like the, the wall just behind the speaker or from the cabinet itself with um, diffraction from the, from the edges that cause the, the wave front to be distorted and become sort of blurry. And that I think is one big contribution to that direct live makes a difference even on, you know, very high end systems. Um, because the, the speaker is, even if it's a fantastic speaker, it's going to be in a room that somehow affects the sound. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, just because, you know, this is a listening lounge, right? So we're just going to go for it, right? So what, what has always boggled my mind is how after years of evolution and hearing and understanding sound, why do we build everything with dimensions that are divisible by one another and create all these problems in the home and in other acoustic environments, you know? And, and if you look a little bit into acoustics, you'll find that, you know, 90% of rooms are just simply not uh, conducive to quality sound. So uh, Dirac, you know, my simple way to say it is it really just takes that room out of the equation. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, and I mean, the room has to be there. Uh, in, in what, what, what is the alternative? Like yeah. listening Everybody outside. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Headphones. Yeah, currently, it, it's it's snowing here, or was snowing here in Michigan. So I'd rather not be on outside, I'd rather oh. be inside. <clears throat> Already, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so the room is always a part of the equation, unless you want to be out in the snow. Yeah. Can, can <laughs> we go back to 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 maybe for the, the 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 newbie or people who are not even familiar with the technology at all? I mean, we're talking about something that's listening to the room. And then making adjustments on its simplest level. Isn't that what it is? Yes, exactly. It, it's, it's not listening all the time. So it's, it's, um, it's like a fire and forget thing. You, you do the calibration once when you set up the system, when you place the speakers and um, yeah, they're placed and you connected everything. Then you pick out the, the measurement microphone and you do a couple of measurements. So it, it will you know, send a couple of sweeps through through the, the speakers and you do measurements in a couple of different positions to make sure to capture like uh, not only a single point, but more like a, um, a listening volume where you're likely to be sitting. And once that is done, you have the measurements, which our algorithm then crunches and spits out uh, a filter to to make um, this impulse response correction that I mentioned. So it's it's done once. Maybe you want to tweak a bit if you want more bass or more treble, uh, but you should be quite done then. Awesome. After having done that setup. Uh, yeah, I was just and, curious for the for the for the new person. You know, it's a it's it probably seems like. Um, magic um you know a technology that could do that but uh that's that's very cool i like uh, thank you for the explanation but um, it's it's really not magic i mean it's difficult mathematics and and systems analysis and all that um but regarded as glasses so we have some 
sight deficiencies that the optician can measure and figure out what what type of glasses do you need, what strength um, and, and all that. Great analogy. And you put on your glasses and you can see. It's amazing. Fantastic. And it's the and same with, with the, the, the sound from the uh, speakers in the room. And Make it's very a, simple a, a good use. measurement. Yeah, very, very yeah. simple to use. It's, it's, it doesn't require any sort of advanced uh, knowledge or anything. It just walks you through the process. Yeah. That's fantastic. I, I, I have a question. Um, so let, let's rewind, you know, maybe 20 years ago in the way that we used to kind of calibrate our receiver or amplifier to work with our speakers. And I, I remember my dad showing me this where we had an older receiver, um, some speakers, whatever vintage they were, I think it must have been like 12 years old. And we would sit in our listening position with a dB meter and it would measure the amplitude of the sound and we'd play tracks from the individual speakers and we get the channel levels to match. And that was like, let's imagine that that's, that's what I know about room correction is at least I'm getting the channel levels right. So no one speaker is playing louder than the other in my listening position. What does Dirac do beyond that uh, to make my listening experience um, more clear, I guess, more transparent, more the way that that speaker is supposed to sound. So I, what I'd like to know is in the, all the different levels of the onion, you know, there's, there's so many different things that happen using the algorithm. What are some of those things that make Dirac stand apart from the rest? Because I know the, the math that is being done in the background is, is pretty extreme. And from firsthand experience on what we were doing with headphones, um, earphones specifically, they're a little bit of a simpler animal, right? There's no room to correct against, yeah. but it's really frequency response correction, the ear resonance connect correction that we did, and the impulse response that made such a dramatic difference to how notes sounded like notes are supposed to sound, which I have some in-ear monitors that have uh, many balanced armatures in them. And you know, you would think they do a really good job. And to this day, they take out the T5A and Cs and they are more natural at reproducing sound than anything else is without feeling bloated or confusing. And this is without the room. And I know that Dirac Live does all of those things and then also tries to correct for the environment that you're inside of. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, th thanks for that introduction of how you were doing the room correction back in the days before you had all these uh, automatic tools and that would do it for you. But what, what you're mentioning, like the level calibration is definitely one of the steps that we do. But I mean, that's quite, uh, well, comparing to, to the rest of the stuff we do, it's, it's quite basic. So, yeah. so step one, yes, the level of the different speakers, make sure that they are equal. Uh, then also um, the the latency or the the delay like, like the travel uh, if if the speakers are at different distances for example that's that's the second thing uh, to make sure that they all arrive at the sweet spot at the same time um, then comes like the, the the intricate part and that's again this impulse response correction so. Um, Making the sound from each speaker more transparent means that the speaker and the, the distance that the sound travels after leaving the speaker should not affect what, um, should not negatively affect the signal that the speaker has been fed. <coughs> um, it's, that's one way to explain it. Another way is that uh, the what you hear is what the artist intends. And the way to do that is to restore the impulse response of the sound system uh, so that it doesn't distort the sound. That That's the, the basic principle. But one important consequence of doing that is that the different speakers will sound very similar because they will 
tend to become uh, or have a similar impulse response. So you get more what we call coherence between the different speakers. And that uh, helps the phantom imaging. So if you have a left or right speaker, uh, maybe one is standing closer to a wall, you will have, you know, that will affect how the left and the right speaker uh, are sounding. So you will have like a, a tilted image from that. Mm -hmm. and, but, but from my experience, sport. sorry to interrupt, yeah. Nilo. Um, Go ahead. From my, my experience, the, the transparency is what just shines through in that situation because the speakers disappear um, in, into, the, into the room because it, it's not affected by it anymore. So um, that's, it's, it's, it's a shocking difference, I will say, as a, as a, as a consumer. Um, it is a shocking difference. It's, it's like, like you said, like glasses, like adding focus to, um, to the image. Exactly. And, and, and that comes from having the same response from both speakers if we talk about the stereo system. So it, it's not a problem for your brain, for your hearing to believe in the phantom image that you get from you know, panning the, the sound uh, between the speakers. For anybody uh, out there uh, interested in experiencing sort of what Nilo is, is describing. Uh, I know we have a lot of surround sound fans on the uh, call or on this uh, live feed. And, you know, we, we sometimes sit in a room with no windows for days listening to the same tracks in our, in our process of tuning these things. Right? Uh, yeah. It's like Vegas, no clocks. You don't, you know, don't worry about the time, get it done. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and, hey, uh, how did you guys know what I do in the evenings? <laughs> well, I mean, uh, I mean, I, I'm ashamed to say that I, yeah, I, I'm with you there, Vlad. But uh, sometimes we do it during business hours, but not likely because we're busy with so many other things. But, but uh, Rob, how many of our customers binge watch some of these series and before they know it, it's 4 a.m.? I mean, I think we have a lot of our passionate home theater customers who... <laughs> get sucked in these to these yeah. Guys, right well, yeah if i could and, give and, an example yeah like from all those hours of listening and listening and and by the way think about the jobs that the people on this call have right first of all we get to hang out with nilo from sweden and talk about the world's finest room correction suite but other than that you know what we really do we build entertainment devices and we enjoy entertainment devices and uh you know, that's something that uh, really drives, you know, when, when we mentioned premium audio company before, and we don't have to keep it on the business side, but it's actually like a brand in itself, you know, and these are the some just some of the many folks under under that umbrella that are trying to bring a premium audio experience. So uh, that being said, there is a scene in uh, the movie Ready Player One, right? It's one of my favorite surround demos as of late because I was doing this, you know, before DVD. But uh, uh, when there's the, the, the race scene and King Kong jumps out, right? When he first jumps out um, in a quality system that's set up properly and tuned properly, Literally, when he grunts, it envelops this space around you, right? And that's that cohesive connection between the sounds where I think Matt said the speakers disappear mm -hmm. and you're in that experience, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, and it should you, freak you out. <laughs> when you hear it like the first time, you know, or a similar experience like that. For me, when I first heard stereo imaging properly when I was yeah. way younger, yeah, I just had to be involved in this industry yeah. in some way, personally. Yeah. But when you, uh, something like Ready Player One, I'm sure a bunch of folks out there probably have seen it or own it or stream it or whatever. Um, when King Kong grunts, it just, it should envelop you and and not say, oh, I just heard him grunt in that speaker. You know, the speaker shouldn't be localizable. Yeah. And by taking the room and its effects on the sound uh, out of the equation, you are actually in the experience. And I think that that is, if we had to describe the one major benefit of this technology, and, and, and by the way, you know, 
being that I'm part of the dev team for Ankyo and Pioneer Elite, you know, there's more that's inside of that box that goes into that. And the same with the speakers and the directionality. And what we've, you know, learned over the years is that all of that work goes into that stuff. And then it goes into a room where you can't hear all that work. Yeah. Right. Right. And, uh, you know, I have the ability in my tiny place here, I'm single. So I put acoustic treatments up everywhere and, you know, and still it needs help. Right. Mm -hmm. But, but in, in most cases, it's a, it's a mixed use room and you still want to have that, you know, theater sound experience. So, all right, I'm on my, I'm on my soapbox now, but, uh, no, that's a good soapbox, Rob. And, yeah. and you know, I I have uh, young children and uh, I get excited about when there's a new Minions movie out, you know. <laughs> and I will say that the new Minions movie, The Rise of Gru, the opening scene is absolutely hilarious. It's very <laughs> enveloping. The soundtracks are so well done. Uh, we were joking earlier of uh, Vlad and I with Tommy Jacobs about uh they're very young kids and, and watching sing too and how music is so important in these movies, these kids movies. Um, you know, I'm the John Wick fan too. And that's when everyone's in bed. So, but, but um, uh, you know, soundtracks are so well done and, and they're just masterful. They're high budget. I mean, what the, the producers are spending on these films. I mean, they really go through great lengths to, to make the sound as spectacular as the video. And when you do have your home theater dialed in, man, it's like, I know there are so many enthusiasts here or new enthusiasts coming up through the ranks, appreciating the quality of high quality home entertainment, uh, that once you do get this experience at home, you, you kind of scratch your head going, why do I go out to the movies again? I, I know it's good, good to go out, especially now that the pandemic's winding down. You go out to restaurants and maybe go out to a movie, a new release. That's always fun. I always encourage that. Of course, go to the big screen. But, you know, home theater is great. It's great. And it's hard to beat uh, the comfort and convenience at home and the performance. So it, this takes it to another level. I, 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 I said it in the beginning and I'll say it again. This was previously attainable only with a professional level of installation. And now it's very attainable in these AVRs. And people are asking about the levels of Dirac. You know what? If you have Dirac, you're you're good. You know, that's what I would say. Maybe I can explain a little bit about maybe where that question's coming from. And sure. if I'm go ahead. So uh there are um you know, it's kind of a great concept because if you purchase a product that um you may not have a requirement for that level of sound correction, for example, for whatever reason, <laughs> and you don't want to pay for it. Okay, understandable. So you can upgrade, right? But what happens there is the price of the product is not a complete solution out of the box. Uh, whereas what we've done with the Ankios and the Elites, some of, some of those products in Integra, um, is worth with Dirac to provide a full Dirac experience out of the box. You don't even have to set up an account as it currently stands. Um, so if that's what you mean by levels of Dirac, yes, there are, there are products that are capable of Dirac that require licensing and additional costs and our existing uh, lineup, our current lineup, and that's the RZ50 and the TXNR7100 and the Elite 305 and 505. You open up that box and it comes with a our little microphone as usual. You plug that in and our app, our free app, walks you through it. And um, But you can, you know, you want to go crazy and have fun like I do and do more measurements and, and save more slots, which I'd like to also mention, you know, how exciting it is to have multiple slots in the receivers. That's another story for a little bit later on. But, uh, you know, you plug that in and immediately on your TV screen, it just says, hey, open up the app and then it walks you through. And, you know, so so there's two ways to look at it. You can get as surgical as you want or you can keep it as simple as as you want it to be, too. And that's that's a major important differentiation, uh, differentiating factor with the products that we have on the market right now. So Dirac is available full 20 to 20,000 Hertz, meaning it's not limited. 
it does the full frequency range right out of the box for no additional cost. Um, yeah, I think the the customizability that you're talking about is really where you're opening the floodgates that sets a differential between what's available in an average audio video receiver straight from the box. It, it's probably a couple of presets that you can choose from after you do the room calibration uh, and pick the best sound, so to speak. And then you can really dive into individual speakers and change their EQ. But what I noticed with Dirac was that first level is kind of the same, right? You open up Dirac Live, you go into, in my case, I have the LX505. I grab the Pioneer app. I do the experience all through there with the inbuilt microphone. Okay, great. First of all, the experience is better. And I think predominantly, you know, when Nilo explained it to me, is there's the, the channel balance, uh, getting everything in phase, which is really critical for getting your image to sound right. And I noticed it right away comparing, you know, the standard inbuilt audio video receiver tuning versus Dirac is uh, immediately when I was watching even a news broadcast, it's like, Boom. Now that sound is coming directly from the television. The the speaker has gone away. <laughs> a uh, news broadcast. I want it to well, be it's accurate an, as possible. It's an example. Dirac can only do so much to give you accurate news, okay? I mean, you're asking yeah, a lot, Brad, all right? Come on. Touche, touche. The accurate news uh, did, did not improve. The, but the news the, sounds so great, even though it sucks, but it's but fantastic. The, the reason I bring up the news is usually, you know, the they, they have pretty good microphones, and it's clear to them that they have to have vocals come through very clear, and they have to come from the center. So I kind of know what to expect, right? right. Because if you open up a movie – you don't know what type of post-processing then happened in order to make that person sound different or wonky or so on. So talking head video, just like this, that's what you got to turn on first. And immediately I notice yeah. right there, that vocal is coming exactly where it's supposed to come from. Glad you're a good sport, my friend. And you know what? <laughs> there are some freaking <laughs> funny questions here in the comments. Uh, <laughs> Russ, Brian, I might let Matt address that one, but I have to ask <laughs> Nilo a question. I, and I know you'll, you know, you'll all be all over that one, Matt. But uh, Nilo, um, so we have a lot of people here who are so passionate about clip speakers, and I think a basic question might be: Will Dirac change the sound of of my clip speakers? How how will it make it better? You know, just a general question for some people who just may not be so familiar with the the correction. Yeah. So if if you wanted to, it will change the sound if you don't want it to it, it can leave it uh, pretty much as it is um, in the direct live tool that you use when you do the measurements and you do the filter design uh, we have something we call curtains um, i don't know if i can share uh, just to show you what what it looks like sure yes. and um right do you see now the the direct live tool yes oh yeah yes great so right here at the bottom it says curtains that i can enable i can basically make them visible so um, tweeters are is a big thing for clips so if i don't want to modify the response from twitter I basically pull down the, the, the curtain this way, and it means that whatever is to the right on the higher frequencies, like the, the tweeter area, will not be adjusted, will not be modified in any way. It will be the area here between the curtains that are, uh, that is, you know, optimized. Very um, interesting. Very interesting. Yes. And then can I say... And it's usually here that you have most of the problems. Right. right. Can I save that then with like a curtained uh, version and a non-curtained version as a slot one and slot two um, in my settings? Yeah, because where I was yeah. getting at, Mark, I, I really like the, the, these layers, the peeling back of the onion, because it really taught me a little bit about my listening preferences 
And that's one thing where not one shoe is going to fit all. Uh, and mm -hmm. I think that's a really important thing to, to bring up here and why we've been working on the other side of the fence on, um, you know, sound bars and powered speakers and giving people room positioning options and equalization and dynamic bass and loudness, all of these tools to make it sound how you want it to sound. And I think that's a really big difference between what I've found with using Dirac as opposed to using some kind of existing AVR tuning mechanism is I didn't have that level of, okay, I've customized it. Now, do I know that it sounds better or worse? Not really. I think I know what I did, but I, I can't really directly compare with what I had before versus what I have now. So in maybe another receiver of mine, I can, I can go and strictly hit bypass and it will bypass everything. Yeah. But it's such a dramatic yeah. difference yeah. between um, what I have and not using any tuning at all. Like my channels are out yeah. of balance and yeah. the phase is all wrong. So now I'm clearly listening to something that's inferior versus something that's better. And I like know, the ability to save it down to yeah. multiple filters and compare. Well, you're a little more technically minded. I, I, you know, Nilo describes what Rob said that, hey, you can have it basic doing some, you know, general correction or drill down further and how, how, how deep, how, and what's interesting about that is it may follow the path of some uh, of our customers who start out with, I want a great home theater. So I'm going to get good speakers. I'm going to get a good AVR and that should be the, the building blocks of a great sounding home theater, not to mention a great TV. Uh, and then, well, I need to stream higher quality from Netflix because I've got a 4K or, you know, or get an Apple TV because it's high res, good quality, good sound. I'm going to get Atmos. I want Atmos. So and then, OK, now I'm really going to dial my system in. I'm going to get some great subs like from Klipsch, like new gen kind of cool stuff. Oh, I let that slip. Anyway, the, the thing is getting great gear. There's no substitute for that. But then it's your room. It's your room that can screw it up. Rob said something very interesting. He said, you know, basic dimensions of rooms, even order dimensions. I complain about this all the time. You could have an eight foot ceiling, 16 feet wide, and then what? You know, 32 feet. Those are even order dimensions. That's not great for sound. You want odd order dimensions, right? You know, maybe nine feet, 15 feet, 20 feet, 21 feet, you know, odd order dimensions. I'm, I'm just throwing that out there as a, a general rule of thumb. But you still have a room to deal with and it could be reflective. Like, you know, Rob has room treatment. I have uh, blinds and plants and carpet. That's all I can do. But, but, you know, when your AVR can say, okay, I see all this with the microphones. It has the mics. The eyes are the mics for the, these electronic devices. So here's how we're going to make it really transparent. That is cool. That is very cool. Dumb question time <laughs> this is coming from me actually before that i got to answer russ um whether oh, yeah. you're listening to metallium or you are just listening to brian eno solo <laughs> that uh, both of those will work with clip speakers because if it's recorded well it will sound great um does not matter um but my, the 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 newbie question that i would like to ask is after you've measured the room and corrected and and you have this thing really dialed in if you change significant parts of that room, you move the couch, you move the coffee table, do you need to re-measure? Can I add something real quick, Neil? Sure. I have to say this because just the other night, I was listening to music through my system. My surround system, I was listening to Tidal, okay? And I had some, uh, I think, Chicane playing, Matt Summers. I had some deep bass electronic stuff going. And I was like, I know these four subwoofers can load better in this room. But I found that if I moved forward, I got off the couch and I sat a little bit like two feet forward, that's where the base was loading in this room. Every room has these nodes. And sure. I don't know how, electronics just cannot overcome the nodes and how base loads in a room. So you might have to, Matt, to your point, move your freaking couch two feet one way or another, you know? But I'm saying that, if you just do... Sometimes people move the couch to another wall. Is it time to recalibrate? Well, you know, don't be shy, everybody, of moving your 
I was going to say seating position. I was going to say another way Your of butt. saying that. But yeah. let's just say seating position. Move your seating Move position. Your seat. You know, for here, optimal sound. And once you do that, then, you know, I did say earlier magic. Uh, what this system can do is so sophisticated. It, it's, it's, I'm now a believer because Rob demonstrated it for me. I'm a believer because of Rob Vieira. And, and now <laughs> I count Nilo as my friend. <laughs> well you know what we did in that particular case uh we were at a trade show and trade shows are usually horrific acoustic environments and with all the noise and everything else that's going on in a massive giant room and a bunch of people standing around we just blew everybody's mind when we turn on uh the DRAC calibration and uh uh i i, I know i kind of sound like a broken record um, but uh, yes, you can enjoy good sound with your existing stereo component and clip speakers. There's well, no question about it. Nilo, you know, it's funny because it started, I don't know where Vlad went. He's on and off camera. Maybe he went to go get another beer. Oh, there he is. Won't Sorry. let me talk. Oh, and that's hard to do. Yeah, that's hard is, to do. It's, but it's but I would say, um, Rob, where did you go? Now, I was going to say this. When when we had the eight, we have the HD sound in the in-ears with the ANC T5 Mark II, I said this on live streams. Once you engage in the app, HD sound, break the switch, you know, break the knob. I mean, I've said that about a few different features, but that's one where you break it off and you never turn that off. Dear yeah. HD oh, sound. Keys, yeah. you, you never turn that yeah. off because the in-ears give you the powerful sound. And I've, I've equated it to, yes, we always talk about the live performance, what the artist intended, Nilo. But I take it a step further, which is so subjective and not good. I mean, not accurate. But what I say is it's like having floor standards with a sub because that adds the oomph that all these in-ear headphones, none of them have that, okay? Except for these. And that's what the HD sound. So when you have a home theater calibrated uh, with DR, it, it just takes it to another level. That's yeah. your job description, Nilo. I, 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 Take it to I, another I, level. That's, that's what you yeah, do every day. I'm, I'm the level guy. <laughs> uh, right. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I'm all um, uh, overwhelmed by all this. Uh, great words. So back to the first question, which I uh, picked up was uh, like, if you're, you know, moving stuff around in the room, do you need to do, redo the measurements? Uh, I'd say if you're moving the speakers considerably, then yes. Um, I, I don't know. I don't have a hard limit, like one meter or 20 centimeters, but uh, as soon as you sense that you're not, if you're in the sweet spot where the sweet spot is supposed to be and you don't have the center in the center anymore, then you may need to recalibrate or move the speaker back. Uh, so you, you'll probably find out if someone has, has moved the speaker. Um, but I think that the corrections we do um will still be valid uh, to to the most extent uh, it it may affect you know the 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 timing of of the uh, of, of that speaker a bit so it you know skews the the imaging uh, slightly but it's it's yeah. move it back and you're good to go again i think or or it you read the measurement it's not that much yeah it costs nothing to recalibrate so I yeah, mean, that's what I was going to say. Is time. You have to, no, should you? Why not? Uh, Why not? Give it a shot. It's going to do the same thing. I mean, even even your results may vary. Just try it uh, and and see if it's improved. You can always start with a new slot in the series of filters and switch back and forth and say, okay, which one sounds better to me? I think really that's what it subjectively comes down to. You, you know what? Oh, sorry, guys. I know we're all like very excited to talk about our experiences and maybe we'll have to do a part two to this, honestly, because <laughs> we've got 15 minutes left, but it's not my job to be the timekeeper. But I just want to mention that one of my favorite features that we haven't touched on is with those different slots, you could um, take one measurement for a very tight, sweet spot. So the way I envision it is 
it's my Friday night cognac snifter jazz music all by myself to escape. And then Saturday night is kids movie night and there's bean bags all over the room. Right. And you're putting on that cartoon that Mark likes. And uh, you <laughs> then take multiple measurements in a wider area. Yeah. Right. And now you can choose between those two measurements, right? So you're optimizing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're, you're you're optimizing your experience for uh, just that particular event, right? So that's so one of my how favorite. How do I parts. do that? How do I do that? How do I have? Well, one? well so, so so yeah, so I would use the PC app to do that. It's it's it'll store discrete slots. With our handheld app, which is made for, hey, I just want to plug this in and get going and have the best sound possible. We can You can store one slot, but then you have to manually manipulate that curve and load it into slot two and three right now as it presently exists. Okay, Rob, you mm -hmm. got to take your custom installer hat off and realize our audience right, is customers who are like, how do I even get into this, you know, with an Anki just receiver and just plug the like, mic in. Just plug can, the mic in. Yeah, explain the process real quick. How do you do it? Uh, you know, I almost shared what we went through to get that user experience down. And then I realized, okay, I would only make it work, make it look more complicated than it really is. Open up the box, get your receiver set up the way it is. Tell the receiver how many speakers you're using, what your config is, plug in the mic, and it's going to say, okay, open up the app. It's going to walk you through the app, and, and it's going to say, hey, do you want to do a quick measurement? We'll just do three. Or do you want to do uh, uh, a wider area? We'll do nine measurements. And I think we could do up to 16 on the PC app. So uh, I understand that there's – the AVR category is, is, is kind of – well, maybe it is for everything CE when you get into our level of components because you have everyone from the first time user who just wants to plug in and get some sound all the way up to somebody who wants to use the same technology that, say, DTS Mastering Studio uses, right? So it goes from entry-level everyday stuff all the way up to the most complicated thing you can imagine, but really the choice is yours in between. Mm. I, the, I, ultimate I I... Goal, the ultimate goal is the same. Go ahead, Nilo. You, you were going to say something. Yeah, so I, I was just going to add that uh, it's important that you make the, the, the first measurement you take in, in a series of measurements has to be in the center, the sweet spot you want, where you're you know, most usually sitting, like where your head would be. Then that's where you should place the microphone when you do the first measurement. And you also have to, to make sure that you're, you don't hold the microphone in the hand. You, you better, if you don't have a microphone stand, then, you know, build a pile of pillows or something, cushions. That's what they made it for, I think. And put the microphone that right there. Uh, so it's not wobbling around because that's, important for the impulse response to get like you know that, that crisp uh, experience uh, so those are the, the the two main things you need to think about when you're doing the measurement uh, first measurement right in the middle of the sweet spot and uh, make sure to have the microphone standing still not move it around so even in the simple configuration, there's the, the second and third measurement where typically it asks you to go, you know, something like a meter to the left and a meter to the right. If yeah. I wanted my, uh, how do you call it? The, the Friday night jazz listening session to be perfect. Would I do all three measurements from the exact same spot or should I still move it one meter to the left and one meter to the right to still get uh, some kind of difference? Exactly. You you want to find that difference because if you make all, if you make all three measurements in the same spot, then you will the result you get will not be valid outside of that spot. Uh, so you you need to spread the, uh, the positions the measurement positions in order to uh, make that correction valid in a greater volume. Got it. 
Yeah. Okay. Okay, Rob, you need to put the sales hat on. Uh, can you explain to customers where they can start with the level of Dirac in the Anki receivers? Maybe, I don't know if we can talk about price points, but maybe price range or something like what models start getting you into this uh, pretty sophisticated circuitry? Uh, TXNR 7100 by Ankyo. That's um, 1299. And how many channels? What's the power? Uh, that's uh, nine by 100, the Magic, Magic 100. Um, you know, Atmos, DTSX, HDMI 2.1, you know, full bandwidth. Um, so it would rock the heck out of an ARP uh, reference premiere speaker package, for example. Oh, for sure. For sure. Yep. And then if you want to bump up to more power, the RZ50 has been just an amazingly popular device. Um, and this and, is and, equally uh, beneficial for movie fans as well as music aficionados. Absolutely. We, uh, by the way, in the development stage of these products, we listen to both. So when we're tied up in those rooms with no windows, we might listen to the same two channel track, two channel uh, uh, music track, you know, for three days straight. And it's really quite an incredible process to see engineers going through a schematic and changing little microscopic parts to help improve sound staging in real time. So there's a lot of effort put into the music performance as well as movies. Mm -hmm. Quick newbie question. I just want to throw out there to you, Rob. Um, so say I've just got part of a home theater system, like a three channel system or a 3.1 system or whatever. Um, is Dirac Live still applicable? Absolutely. Okay. So it doesn't matter what the configuration oh. is. It, it, it will adjust. Oh, for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, some of the best effect I've, personally had has been with just stereo and a subwoofer and making sure that my stand mount speakers cross over well with the subwoofer and they sound like one speaker that's that was arguably one of the biggest differences okay I this now it's time for my newbie question once you've done the direct uh calibration does it benefit stereo listening oh, absolutely so multi-channel stereo and everything in between. Okay, that's cool. That's right. Okay, that's very cool. Yeah. So uh, it's it's about this imaging, you know, with the with the face coherence of, of the speakers. Uh, it, it makes the phantom image, you know, sharp as if there was a speaker right yeah, there. Yeah. So uh, just to be clear, you know, the phantom image is, uh, you know, if you. <laughs> If two sounds reach your both ears at the same time, you perceive it as being in the center. But nowadays, recordings, object-based mixing are placing items, uh, items, sounds in between all these individual channels. And that, and Nilo's talking about when he says phantom, he means there's no speaker there, and yet there's a sound, right? It's yeah. absolutely an incredible phenomenon if yeah. you haven't had a chance yeah. to really take a listen and say, hey, am I hearing something between the center and the right speaker? Or is it just I'm only hearing center and I'm only hearing right speaker, right? So in that case, what that would do is it, it will collapse the soundstage. And we're smart enough as human beings with our hearing and our brains to say, wait a minute, I'm listening to a speaker and not an event. Mm. And it's very obvious when, when you have stereo speakers and you're sitting in the sweet spot and you have a singer right in the middle that that should be uh, i mean you don't hear the singer coming from the left and right speaker you, you hear uh, like a, an image in the middle right. and uh, i'm i'm seeing in the chat uh, that there's a question about uh, uh, the favorite uh, demo and uh, relating exactly to this there is a dolby atmos demo i think it's called leaf or something like that where where this a bird flying around and in every every time i i've heard this uh, if i don't have the direct live engaged then i hear this bird first in that speaker and then suddenly in that speaker but engaging direct live 
you, you hear how it's flying around. And that's so obvious. Mm -hmm. So, so it, it speaks for itself. You know, actually, so Dolby has been very generous, a great partner over the years. And um, uh, they, they have supplied me personally with uh, these demo discs that you're referring to, Nilo. Uh, these are these discs. What's interesting is I've seen them on eBay for ridiculous money. And, and what we're going to do this holiday season, Matt, come back here, please. We're going to give away personalized gift packages and we're going to include these discs because these demo tracks, and I think you can stream them, but the only thing is when you stream them, does that come through? Atmos doesn't come through. So to have the Blu-ray yeah. disc, you know, it, it's really compelling. Dolby put together these demos to show how great Atmos truly is. And somebody asked a question uh, in the uh, public chat about, I have my theater system in a very, well, some friends have it like second floor, vaulted ceilings, not optimal space. And while we're talking about Dirac and room correction, and transparency. The thing about Klipsch with control directivity is with the horn loaded designs, they put the sound into your listening area and they don't send it here, 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 here. I've said this so many times in other listening lounges that starting off with Klipsch means you will need less correction. Okay. You're already starting off on a really solid footing for phase coherency. You've heard that term today, right? Uh, time arrival, all these things that really contribute to a realistic sound stage or image or mm -hmm. phantom image. One of the beautiful things about Dolby technology, and it started with Dolby Digital, when the front channels and the rear channels were all full range, you could create this movement between the channels that was seamless because they all were reproducing the full range of human hearing. Right. And of course, with Atmos, it's taken to another level. So having multi-channel in your room, the sound should be seamless. And I would submit that if you're starting out with a Klipsch suite of speakers in multi-channel, you're, you're on a good footing to have that already. And then when you do the Dirac fine tuning, it just, it absolutely, it's like taking a sledgehammer and knocking down your walls. I mean, virtually. <laughs> don't want anybody to be doing that. We don't recommend that. You know, it's almost like it's almost like the disclaimers when you watch the Jackass movies. We do not recommend anybody do that. You know? <laughs> you <know? laughs> but that's what you're doing. You're knocking down the walls and you're going you're being transported to the space that the sound engineer intended the director. You know, if, if it's a scary scene in a movie, it's if, if it's hilarious, if you if the music is meant to transport you like in these kids movies, it just will make the parents smile. I know that the people that are doing the soundtracks they're just trying to make the parents crack up because they're going back to the eighties and they're playing this funny music that the kids suddenly it's very popular again. All these, you know, earth, wind and fire is very popular again. You know, September is very hot, you know, because it's in these kids movies. Anyway, I digress, yeah. but uh, it's supposed to be fun. That's the bottom line. I always go back to fun and there's a lot of technical information here, Rob, I, I agree with you. We may have to come back. Nilo, if you want to come back, I'll, I'll buy you another beverage. You know, sure. <laughs> you know we're, 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 we're uh, with you as well. Or whiskey. And, you know, if, if people right. want to have a little bit of a run through, how do we, can you take us through, Rob? How do we unpack it? How do we set it up? What do you yeah. recommend for speaker placement? And then once we get our speakers placed, because those are the basics. And then I love the fact that Neil said, hey, stack up some pillows, put the microphone there. I love that because I have done that before <laughs> with the pillows. Tips and tricks. That's what we need, Neil. Tips and yeah. tricks. How to dial in your home theater for the holidays, for example. That could be one of our sessions, Matt. You know, uh, I don't want to leave some of our questions here hanging. Yes, um, go ahead. Go I know ahead. we only have like a couple minutes. So uh, we did have Lightning recently round. a firm. If somebody's asking, do I need to run DRAC again after a firmware update? We did have recently a firmware update that improves uh, the microphone uh, accuracy. But not not only that, it also uh, extends the uh, subwoofer uh, delay time to 50 milliseconds. Uh, for some reason, it was, it was a little bit less than that and it wasn't doing it for everybody's situation. 
So if you want to take advantage of those two features, then I would say, yeah, let run it again. And then the other thing is maybe on part two, um, we can maybe Nilo can explain to us, you know, high level. If I had to say the top three reasons why you would want to use Direc versus some other room tuning solution, doesn't matter what it is, you know, maybe that would be something that uh, the folks in the chat would want to learn about because I see a bunch of this versus that. And it's, it's a very, very broad topic, but maybe we do it again and, and we do just a high level of uh, what makes DRAC, uh, uh, what's the, what's the advantage for, for DRAC? Well, I have an idea. I mean, how about the advanced stuff that I've seen you do, Rob, that I, I haven't done myself in, in my home theater setup. I've only used the, the microphone that's in the box, mm -hmm. plugged it into the front of the receiver, used the Pioneer application to set it up. But what I've seen you do is use a Umic One mini DSP microphone plugged into a PC using the Dirac suite to then do the measurements uh, and I think that's the area where, okay, now you've entered a whole new level of customizability and flexibility. Uh, and that would be important to cover. For sure. And uh, by the way, uh, anybody out there who really wants to dive deeper, there's a, a, a forum thread on ABS forum for the RZ50 um, that really goes deep. Uh, and it's it's tough to cover all of that in, in this type of a session, right? So we don't want to leave you hanging it's just that, uh, you know, we're limited on time as well as, you know, how many hours do we want to spend, uh, ask you guys to spend right in each clip. So, yeah, we could break it into smaller segments. And anyway. Let's do it. Let's I'd do be happy way. to join before the holidays to get, to get that Thank you you know, you. holiday tuning. Done. There it is, the you make one. Holiday tuning special. Hey. There it is, Matt. Look there's that, the title Brad. of the listing lounge, Holiday Tuning. <laughs> that could mean a lot of things, you know. <laughs> oh, man. We will continue to try to answer questions yeah. in the thread, um, but uh, we really appreciate everybody tuning in. A lot of this, for me, is new, and um, I'm learning as we go, but what the results that I've heard as a, as a newbie to this have been, have been fascinating. Um, just as a, a, a producer and mixer on my own, being able to hear that music back through it and have it sort mm -hmm. of, like you were saying, you're sitting in the, in the optometrist's office and they're going A, B, one, two, you know, you're, and it just dials it in. And that's, that's really cool. Um, so congratulations on inventing something really cool, Nilo. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm happy to help. <laughs> so I will say this. Paul Klipsch, our founder, he was all about changing the status quo. He, he was seen as a little bit of a rebel in the early 40s, Nilo. And when he invented the Klipsch horn, people couldn't believe what was possible in a home hi-fi system, one speaker, mono, in a corner, reproducing the full output of a symphony orchestra with authority and clean, low distortion sound when 10 watts of power from a tube amp was a lot of power. Now we have the modern era of audio-video receivers with multiple channels with 100 watts, no problem, and we have modern clip speakers that are high efficiency, not requiring a corner like the clip horn, although we still make the clips horn after 76 years, right? Uninterrupted, can't improve the original design. We have the Jubilee. A lot of people said, will Dirac improve the Jubilee? <laughs> That's a great question. That's a good one. Did you see that in the question? Yes. That's yeah. infinity times infinity. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I guess my point there is taking it to the next level. We at Klipsch, and I, I think at Dirac is also, uh, as a partner, we won't rest with the status quo. Never will we rest. While we're breathing, we will continue to keep pushing for better, more impressive, realistic sound quality. And I've said it in other live streams, video is fantastic. Video quality, high resolution. It's wonderful how it's evolved. It's ironic because as high resolution comes along, I have to wear glasses. I, there's something weird about that. But uh, sound, it, the quality of sound, the power of sound 
the involvement and envelopment of sound. There are a few things in this life that are as emotional and powerful. And that is what we're talking about here. And we want all of the people who attend and, and people who see this as a recording to just take this away from these sessions. It is worth it. It is a great investment. You will have years and years, decades of enjoyment from high quality sound. And I would say high quality sound, highest quality sound is an affordable luxury in this world. We all have luxuries, hot water, clean water, electricity, heat. We never take these basics for granted. But I would say in this modern world, high, highest quality audio sound reproduction is a beautiful luxury that serves the arts. And, and artists, people who produce movies, artists who produce music, Rob, Matt, musicians in this industry, music is about people artists that have committed their lives to the art and of course cinematography movies um the, the mastery in um movie production and then i think vlad he just jumped off but games you know the games out there it's amazing the gaming right so the, all these facets of entertainment sound quality can't say enough about sound so I, I know I'm on my soapbox. We're probably a little bit over, but those are just my final comments. And this, all we've discussed serves that end goal. So enjoy, enjoy, and have fun in the process. Cheers to that, Mark. Yeah, I like cheers it. to that. Let's have a toast. Well said. Thank you, right. Nilo. And thank we you want, for having us. We yeah, want you thank to come you back. For, thank you for being here. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm very